Hi guys, Luke here. I wanted to do a, uh, a docking and rendezvousing tutorial here for you guys. Uh, docking is something that you always see people kind of struggling with, and it, it's something that I have quite a bit of experience with in-game. Um, when, when Point 18 came out, I basically spent the, that, whole, uh, that whole update cycle just building ridiculous things in orbit. Um, kind of cluttered up my low kerbal orbit. I built several stations as well as, you know, a couple on, on other plan planets as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the Space Cube 3000, if you guys saw that post, uh, as well, that was me. But, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I kind of wanted to, to, to kind of go into some tips and tricks that I have for, for rendezvousing, uh, cause I do have a fair amount of experience. You'll notice that I've got, uh, these two tugs, one forwards and backwards of my little fuel tank here. Uh, and there's a reason for that, which I'll, I'll go into once I, uh, once I actually get this thing up to orbit. And I'm not going to show the whole process here, but I, uh, there's one thing I need to, uh, to touch on before I actually get this thing up there, and that's uh, proper launch window. Uh, you really want to uh, move your target to where it's uh, kind of over here. Usually I like to do about a 20 degree angle along kind of this uh, angle here. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, it, it saves you a lot of time rather than trying to catch up or, or you know, let the target catch up with you. You basically just set it up so that the target's going to be where you need it to be. Um, and, uh, and then you, you, you basically can just get there without having to do a lot of the uh, intermediary orbits that you would otherwise have to do. Um, so about right here is good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch this thing and get myself up to orbit. I'm probably going to skip most of this so that you guys don't have to watch it. But, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, skip until we're there, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so we're done with our main burn here, and we're basically just waiting to apoapsis. You can see that uh, already we're, we're at a separation of only 7.8 kilometers, and that's just coming up straight from the, uh, from the space center. We're going to... Uh, make a maneuver node here and kind of try to dial that in a little bit more um, and uh, my, my apoapsis here is kind of shifting so we can pull it this way uh, using the uh, uh, this is the yeah <laughs> that one there <laughs> uh, to, to kind of bring that in closer uh, I don't remember what this one is called uh, anti-radian maybe radian I don't I don't remember something like that but uh, I totally blank it on the name um, and then yeah basically fine-tune this until we get it close uh, 1.5 kilometers is not bad that's probably we're, we're going to go ahead and leave that for the moment um, go back out and I'm gonna jettison my little roll cage here this is for structural integrity and uh, as well as my nose cone, which is just for looks. It makes it kind of look nice to have a little pointy end on it um, versus having a little flat point here. It makes a little more sense since it's a rocket to have it actually look like a rocket. Um, but, uh, but yeah, let's uh, get ourselves lined up with our node here and time accelerate until we're at the apoapsis or we're very close to it um, in about... Uh, few seconds here oh went too far okay let's burn um, before I actually get this thing to orbit I'm going to want to jettison my mainsail engine and probably do the rest with just the poodle here um, the reason being is to uh, basically minimize minimize the debris that that I, I have um, because I don't really like having a lot of clutter in my, my orbit here. Um, alright, so, we're looking like 1.4 kilometers, and I'm going to use the, uh, the translation on the RCS, uh, forwards and back to, uh, to kind of fine-tune that. Uh, you see, it's getting further away, so we're going to go ahead and back up. It looks like 1.4 is probably about as close as we're going to get. Uh, we can use the other translation, like translating up or down, but that doesn't seem to have much effect. Uh, so we'll probably just leave it at 1.4, and uh, yeah, come back to that when we get about right here, and I'll show you the rest of the rendezvousing process, and then we'll dock this thing. So we're about two kilometers away now from the target. I'm 
you can see my uh, my prograde vector here. Oh, that's I'm not set on the right. Okay, so you can see uh, here's the target node here. Here's my retrograde marker here. Um, normally you'd burn right on that, but if you kind of burn a little bit away from it, uh, it's gonna kind of push it towards your target, and that way you can get yourself lined up. So now if you look at my uh, thing, I'm gonna hit at about 0.1 kilometers. So that's that's very close. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're gonna time accelerate a little bit more, bring this in nice and close, um, not too close, and you can kind of just repeat the process, um, works pretty well, uh, to, to just kind of line yourself up like that. Um, when you burn, wherever you're burning is going to kind of push the prograde vector away from you, uh, whereas it's, or sorry, it's going to push the retrograde marker away from you, whereas it is going to kind of pull the, uh, the prograde vector kind of towards where you're, you're, you're at. Uh, and so using that technique, it's, it's pretty easy to get that dialed in. Um, and, uh... And yeah, we'll get ourselves stopped to basically nothing, and I'm going to jettison my engine, because at this point I don't really need it, and I can just cancel, uh, just just kind of delete this thing later. Um, but uh, but now I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about, uh, about why I've got the two RCS tugs, um, why I'm not just using a single one, uh, for large and heavy things, like for putting up this docking ring here, uh, or any of the large fuel tanks and that kind of thing, I find that, that having a, uh, a dock, uh, a, uh, um, RCS tug on, on either side is usually a good idea. You don't always need a full tug. Sometimes you can just do like a, like just a, a small thing, like a probe core that you can then just kind of delete. But I wanted to show it with, with two tugs because this is, this is kind of the more robust way of doing things. Um, and considering that in point, uh, two one, uh, they're planning on making it so you can't just end the flight. This is really kind of the way that I, that I wanted to show you you, you guys here. Um, and the reason why I'm using the the two tugs versus just the one is if you look at uh, at when when you have an unbalanced load, um, if I try to to uh, do a um, a translation here. Um, tr if I try to, uh, you know, move myself in just one direction, I'm going to try to do that right now. I'm going to try to translate left. And as you see, when I do that, it doesn't translate me at all. It basically is just going to rotate me. And that's not what you want at all. Um, and so it really helps to have everything balanced uh, for that reason. Um... So if we switch back to my little tug here, I'm going to dock this thing. Um, it is kind of rotating a little bit, so I'll hit the time acceleration to stop that, set that as my target. I guess I already did that. Um, and we'll bring this thing in. Now, what you want to have happen when you translate is it moves. Oops. Okay, I'm facing the wrong way. Uh, you want to have this thing kind of... Uh, when you translate, you know, it needs to be able to move you. And when you're docking things, this is kind of the best way to fly. Instead of having to reorient yourself when you need to, uh, to change directions, you can just thrust using your RCS thrusters, and you can accomplish the same goal, but in a much easier way. Um, and uh, as far as actually docking the thing... Um, your uh, your little target vector here. You want to line that up with your prograde vector, and you do that by kind of moving the uh, the prograde vector using the translation keys, and uh, yeah, then we get ourselves nice and docked. And I'll show that in a little bit more detail now that I've got my ship back together. Um, another thing that that kind of helps is to try to make sure that these RCS thrusters here are kind of all in a line, uh, because if they're not, then uh, like for example, if you've got these RCS thrusters on top, but on this side, they're kind of more at an angle here. Uh, then when you try to, to, to thrust, um, this thing's going to have to fire two RCS thrusters. It's going to have to fire this way, 
um, with the one to push it that way as well as on on the, the bottom like it over here it'll have to fire that way so that it pushes it this way and that together will create a combined thrust in this direction but uh, but that's not really what you want because then the the front side here which is thrusting directly is going to have more power and it's not going to be quite balanced um, you really want this thing to be balanced as much as possible when you're docking. Um, that's why, uh, you know, kind of looking at... Uh oh, I just canceled that, didn't I? I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Okay, good, 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 good. We're still recording. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I canceled that real quick. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, to, to get ourselves docking... Um, to get ourselves uh, lined up for docking, rather, um, first thing you want to do is get yourself kind of close. Uh, you don't want to try to, like, for example, if, if I'm trying to dock on this thing, I don't want to get myself lined up until I'm almost ready to dock. I want to get myself uh, as close as possible to the target. So chase cam is very important when you're docking. If you don't know how to do that, you hit the V button until it cycles uh, to chase camera here. Um, this is super important because when you move the ship, it's going to follow the ship instead of, uh, you know, kind of hanging out and doing whatever. Um, also, it, uh, it, it centers yourself according to, you know, so that way when you hit the left key, it's actually moving you left instead of, like, when you're in uh, orbital or, or, or just free cam. You know, that's not always the case. In fact, more often than not, when you're in free cam... It's like, okay, I'm in free cam, yay, I want to move this way, and, and, it, and it's, it's going to send you in the wrong direction. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, same thing here with the target. If I, since I don't have thrusters, I, I, can, I can use my, uh, my RCS to kind of pull my, my, my prograde vector, get it towards uh, where I want to go. But it's so much easier, instead of doing that, to just use the translation keys. I can thrust downwards using that. And that will move my, my prograde vector downwards. And, uh, you know, if I need to move up, do the same thing, but in reverse. And I'm going to slow myself down because I'm moving pretty quickly here. Uh, but now that I, I'm pretty well lined up, you want to get this thing about to where the, the, the target is, is centered with your center of mass, the target docking port. Um, and uh, let's bring my, my prograde vector up so that I can cancel the rest of the, the velocity now that I'm at zero, basically. Oh, and I'm really close to it. I'm going to have to back myself up a little bit. <laughs> All right. Backing up, backing up. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Uh, bring ourselves, let's cancel our velocity again. Uh, because we don't want to be moving this fast, especially away from the target. So I'll zero myself out again um, and get myself lined up with, uh, with the target. Um, for this part, I like to use both hands. I, lay, I have my left hand doing the, uh, the up, down, left, and right as far as the pitch roll and, uh, and yaw and everything. Um, where I use the translation keys with my right hand and this 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 is probably the best way to control things because you uh, you have control over your your pitch and your translation at the same time without having to uh, to kind of separate that um, but then yeah you want to uh, you want to try to line up your your prograde vector here with kind of the direction that you want to go relative to where your target node is and uh, this this takes a little bit of practice but once you get used to it it's 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 pretty easy to do um, if I want to move this way see I'm, I'm, I'm too far to the side here so I'll move that way and then I can bring it back forwards and basically dock the thing um, And now that we're docked, um, I'm going to uh, time warp to, to get rid of any wobble. And this is kind of the, the part that, uh, that, uh, that I, I kind of figured out. Uh, you know, docking large, ridiculous things here. Uh, you know, if you only have one tug, then, then it, you know, it, it's very hard to do, especially something like this big station ring here. Uh, it can be a pain... 
uh, to try to get everything lined up and to try to bring everything down onto the target. Um, and I'm actually going to time warp to where it's in the sun so you can see this whole thing better. Um, give me just a second as I go around the planet, go around the planet, go around the planet. Give me just a second. Okay, here we go. Um, so I like to quick save before I do this so that way you don't accidentally mess anything up. And especially like uh, with these large tugs, it, it's, it's not really something you have to worry about as much. I mean, because you got 750 units of monopropellant which is usually enough to do, I mean, I could get these things to the moon from here, you know, <laughs> and probably back. Uh, but, uh, but you know, uh, that's not really the point. The, the point is, like, uh, you know, uh, you want a quick save because especially if you're doing something smaller, like with these size docking ports or even these ones here, um, you know, if, if you mess up, you're much more likely to be in a tough spot at that point. Um, and, and up until the point that we had these large docking rings, I was typically using only the 100 unit fuel tanks, uh, just because it was, you know, pretty much like to keep everything in the right form factor, that was really the easiest way to go. Um, so this is the technique I developed. You undock here, switch back to our little ship here, kind of, uh, maybe back up just a little bit. Actually, I'm not going to do that. But then uh, also you want to undock here. So then this piece is now separate from this piece. And if we go to it, switch to our chase cam so we don't accidentally thrust in the wrong direction. Um, but if we just kind of nudge it. Oh, that's not the way I want to go. Speaking of thrusting in the wrong direction. Uh, if we just kind of nudge this out of the way. And then switch back to our module here all we have to do is just thrust forward and we will line up and dock our fuel tank with the station and this is how i've handled you know some of the larger things that i built in orbit uh you know again this docking ring that's how i did it and uh and yeah, so that's uh, that's that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, there's one more thing I guess I wanted to talk about real quick, and that's uh, that's this piece here at the end of my station. This is my communications array. Uh, but uh, you notice there's no docking ports on the end of it. There's also no probe core on here, so this thing doesn't have any any way of of controlling itself. But but it's docked onto the end of the station. And, uh, you know, I had to get it up here some way. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted to just show that very briefly. So we'll go to the, uh, the vehicle assembly building. And I'm, I'm not going to show the whole mission. I'm just going to show just, just kind of the design for that portion. Um, that's the only other thing I wanted to show you guys while, while I got your attention here. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the VAB here in just a second. So this is what I wanted to, to show you right here. Uh, what I've got is basically a radial decoupler uh, attached to uh, one of these radial attachment ports. And then I've got one of, uh, it's basically a modified version of Scott Manley's uh, tug that he uses in his uh, reusable space program. Um, as well as I've got a tug here on the bottom. And uh, yeah, basically a little engine with a poodle um, or a little fuel tank with a poodle on it. Um, and this is this is how I would dock it using the the, the same exact principle. I uh, you know line everything up, bring it, dock it, and then and then separate this portion and then push it forward. Uh, and and yeah, that's that's basically how I how I do it. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. If uh, if you guys like the video, give me the thumbs up. Uh, you know maybe leave a comment or two. Let me know what you thought. But uh, but yeah. Um, that uh, that is my docking tutorial, and uh, I, I plan on you know making more of these. But uh, you know I do have a full time job, so so uh, <laughs> you know I'm gonna do them as as frequently as I can, and uh, you know hopefully uh, hopefully I can I can make plenty more of these in the future. But uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.